You know, if it wasn't for Tuka Hanamoku, a lot of people on the mainland would never know about surfing. We are here with a resident expert, Mr. Dave Kalama. Aloha, Dave. Aloha. And we're going to talk about, you know, an extreme type surfing. Now, I, I, I'm going to go right into this. I didn't prep you for any of this. You guys ride Jaws, and Jaws gets how big? It can get up to, at the high end, 80 foot faces. Wow. So everything you could ever Eight want. Eight story building, nine story building? Exactly. When you're standing there looking straight down? Only that building's falling and it's about to land on you if you don't get out of the oh way. Oh my goodness. What happens to a guy like you or uh, we'll, we'll, and your buddies when you're sitting on the beach and you're prepping to go out in that kind of wave? I mean, uh, you've got to have some type of mental prep, right? Absolutely. You, you do have a mental prep, and my mental prep is to uh, kick in the biggest state of denial that I possibly can. <laughs> I try and pretend it's not that big, right? and I just go through the motions and just prep like it was any other day. And when I, I know that moment of truth will come, I'll deal with it. Right. But I try not to psych myself out, and I try and keep a, a, a relaxed mood and just have fun and just, just enjoy every minute of it and not get too heavy at you know, it's the biggest waves I've ever ridden or anything sure. like that, you know. So the guy towing you in, he's got to be your right-hand man, right? Oh, your tow partner is everything. He's yeah. your lifeline. He, and it's no exaggeration. He can save you or he can leave you out to dry, so to speak. Really? Yeah. He's got to know how to get you into that wave. Do you guys talk this stuff up before you go in or are you guys on the same page from the, you know, from get-go? When you do it a lot with somebody, you almost get this unspoken communication where you can just look in a person's eye and you know what he's thinking and he knows what you're thinking and it's almost unspoken. Especially the more intense it is, the more that factor or that phenomenon is probably true. And on the really big days, working with Laird and, and riding those big, those big waves, right. it's all teamwork. It's pure teamwork. If, if your buddy's not on the same page, it could end in a disaster. Is there a way to paddle into those without doing the tow, or uh, w what's your what's your thought about that? Uh, you cannot paddle in to waves that large. It's breaking too fast. It's huh? breaking too fast. Right. You you can only go so fast with with these right. two hands, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the jet ski can go a lot faster just with a little pull of the finger. That's right. <laughs> so the jet ski gets you up to speed, and you can kind of match speed with speed, you know. So that's that's really the only way to get waves that large. Any close calls? always close calls. You try and keep them to a minimum, but every now and then you you have those little internal conversations with yourself where, eh, am I in over my head? No, you can handle this. No, you're over your head. No, I can do it, you know? And you go back and forth and just hopefully the guy that says uh, you can do it always wins. <laughs> Lousy question, when you're wiping out, uh, uh, and uh, I'm assuming you wiped out on a show. Yes, okay. yes. Because it's like riding a horse. You fall down, you get right back up and you go, what's it like? Eight stories worth of building just turning you down. Is that water deep enough to, do you know what I mean? Or are you hitting bottom or what? Guys do hit bottom, but it's rare. But when you wipe out on a wave that big, or at least when I wipe out on a wave that big, um, New Year's Day 2000 was, was perhaps my worst experience. Oh. And I had come up from a, a three wave situation and my buddy was right there. And I said, get me back on, before I could even know if my arms and legs right. were working, get me back on the horse immediately. Really? Oh, I was I was petrified, petrified. And so we, the next wave I got, I, I'm i going down the wave and, and everything seems kind of okay, but something's not right, you know? And all of a sudden I look down and my knees are shaking because <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I gotta get over this, you know? So yeah. you, you take your time and inch your way back into it and you get into the, the critical zone, but uh, it can be it can be a very serious situation sure. and it can change your life and and I tell you I've got a lot of respect for that wave on the North Shore called Piagi. Oh man, Mavericks! Tell me about Mavericks. Is it the same caliber? Is it different? What? It's hard for me to speak accurately of Mavericks, but I've I've spoken to the guys that ride it all the time. I've never been there myself. Number one, they've got a lot bigger fish than we do, and I Watch think you it. know what I mean by that. <laughs> Great white sharks. Exactly. <laughs> The water is about 20 degrees colder, and so between the, the fish and the water, I'm not sure why I would want to go there, but a lot of people seem to. Yeah. <laughs> but it, Does it get big every year? Like It gets jaws? very big. Yeah. It gets very big. I've been told it doesn't break with quite the same intensity, but that isn't a, that's a huge wave. It's sure. a huge wave. 
and people die there. So that oh. tells you everything. It's, it's a real wave. Chao Po in Tahiti, different type of a wave, more hollow maybe, and it's not, uh, how do I explain this? It doesn't break straight. It kind of has a, a turn into it, right? Like a, a fishtail at the end. Chopu is kind of like, it's, it's like the pit bull of waves. Yeah. It might not be the biggest wave, but it's perhaps the most ferocious and intense wave on the planet, <laughs> hands down. That wave will tear you apart, literally yeah. tear you apart. It's shallow. It's very shallow. How, how shallow is it? Um, a wave normally breaking in that size right. would perhaps be 20 to 30 feet deep. That wave probably breaks in four to eight foot of water. So if you if you go down with the lip, right. you're gonna meet the bottom real quick. Now, you gotta tow into that wave, right? Or do you try to paddle into that wave? What's the deal? Guys do paddle into that wave on the smaller ones. Right. When it gets really large into the 15 foot range, um, you're not paddling in. It, it's a freak of nature, that wave, it really yeah. is. Is it the reef, is it the way the, what is it, it underground, what? It's very deep water coming into very shallow water very quickly. And so that's what causes the water to literally drain off the reef, meet the wave coming in, and it, it just stops in cylinders on itself. And wow. there's so much energy being released at that, that one little point that if, uh, if you're caught up in it, it gets ugly. <laughs> Dave, we, we, we sh thank you so much for sharing your stories. It's a pleasure, Rescue. Our uh, resident surfing expert right here. And we're gonna be right back, right after this. I'm Dave Kalama, Big Wave Surfer on Maui, and you're watching MauiToday.tv.